and members of the house. In the status quo right now, we're facing with soldiers under the, under the bars, ladies and gentlemen. We see them being tried, ladies and gentlemen, without having such kind of ideas on how fair trials should be happening. We see when they are having this kind of notions, under this kind of notions, when they kill civilians on the war crimes, they will be automatically guilty. We are all solutions here in which we would like to make this kind of thing. Following order as a chain of command in the military, we will make these people to suffer to, to see again the lights of the air of the fair trials to begin with, Mr. and Mrs. Speakers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our our our, our stance is simple. We're going to do, to make this a valid defense, but this is not going to guarantee you to bail out of the prison free. If you, if you're if you then, ladies and gentlemen, can be proved wrong in the final trial, you are still going to the prison. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to point to, to point uh, to, to to or go a simple to serve the justice and to my two points of rebuttals. Uh, uh, sorry, two points of cases in this first. How does it in essence have uh, uh, these people are still the part of the society and have every means necessary to defend themselves? And second, on how uh, on on how the decisions to make uh, to to make them during the war time was not consented to begin with. Now let's head on to my first argument. First, ladies and gentlemen, these soldiers are are actually the part of the society. If not, they're one of the citizens of the world, aren't they, ladies and gentlemen? They're still subject to every kind of law, every single law existed in the world. And many soldiers, ladies and gentlemen, they still have this kind of channel to do fair kind of defense. On whatsoever means necessary, they can bail out if they can do and convince them in the trial, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the second question would be, how can they still serve to the equality of the law, ladies and gentlemen? How can then they still have this kind of presumption of innocence? Like I have explained to you in front, ladies and gentlemen, and status quo, they do not have such kind of ideas of presumption of innocence. Meaning if you kill the civilians for whatsoever reasons, or for even in a reason that endangered life, ladies and gentlemen, you are still going to be held accountable. They, ladies and gentlemen, do not have the same exact channel like they do in, in civilian trial. In which in the civilian trial, you can even kill someone if he jeopardizes your life, or this is an act of self-defense. And throughout, throughout, my, throughout my argument, I will uh, explain to you on how this is still a valid defense to begin with, Mr. and Mrs. Speakers. Second, uh, we're going to link to the goal on how this will serve justice. In, in, in our proposal, this kind of things, this will serve justice to make all kind of like room ladies and gentlemen, to go to the extent, uh, I'll take a moment of <clears throat> to go to the extent of be trying them in all in a sense of affairs as soon as possible, ladies and gentlemen. See what you We think that first of all, if you say that there's a subject to civilians, civilians are subject to human rights, and we think that should be followed. But second of all, we think that status quo does not have automatic discharge. We see military force that we think is fair enough. If you are not making them having the defense in, in, in itself, we don't see in status quo they have this kind of thing. Meanwhile, you can you can always be proven killing, and therefore you are automatically jailed for that reason, ladies and gentlemen. This is not fair, and this presumption of innocence does not exist in status quo. And I'm going to go on my second second point. First, on how this decision to make war crime is not consented to begin with. Ladies and gentlemen, when wars are fought, ladies and gentlemen, in their war crimes, oh, in their war crimes, we see that these cases are special. And when you are justified to kill people if they are combatants, meaning that they are carrying guns, they are fighting for certain ideology, and they shoot at you and you shoot back, and they're done. But you're never justified, ladies and gentlemen, to kill civilians. You are not justified to attack media because they pose no threat on you, ladies and gentlemen. And this kind of thing is ideally what we call as war crime in general, ladies and gentlemen. Through my, my, my second explanation, ladies and gentlemen, these trainings are, are making them who they are, who the soldiers are, ladies and gentlemen. These people are doing post-ups, are doing sit-ups, and fancy 300 meter, meter sprint. And that's all sweaty moments, ladies and gentlemen, and how this hot and, and this cold hunks, ladies and gentlemen, are somehow going to are, are make our thought and educate it to only answer the order. To call up these ladies and gentlemen, no thank you, on how the indoctrinated in very essence, the enemy of you, of your commanders, are enemy of the state. This is what's wrong, and they're merely following order on the perceiving of them, seeing that these people are the enemies of the uh, enemies of the state, and therefore they have to be eliminated, ladies and gentlemen. We see that this is the mistake of the commander on how on how this is still, ladies and gentlemen, within the li liability to label, ladies and gentlemen, which is combatant and uncombatant. And an ability to do so is actually the commander's mistake and not theirs as the soldiers, ladies and gentlemen. Second, ladies and gentlemen, 
how the environment then cannot have this kind of thing conducive on how the capital cannot not, not go in, how actually they don't have the capability to answer to that logic. Maybe ladies and gentlemen, they will say they will say later in this speech. However, they have this logic. They have they're becoming suddenly Jesus Christ, that they are thinking that killing these people are wrong, ladies and gentlemen, and suddenly they will revolt. We see this kind of things is not going to happen. Why is that? We see the court martial law. We see how, ladies and gentlemen, if you are going to desert your army on you, how you will actually hampers the ability of your unit to act as a unit, ladies and gentlemen, you will be justified to be killed. That is exactly why the officers, ladies and gentlemen, will carry handguns always. 15 rounds to kill 15 deserters they see at the very first place. When they turn back from the battles, they will shoot him. Because of this cultural ma ma martial court exists, ladies and gentlemen, they will be haunted. They will, ladies and gentlemen, that they will make non rational judgment because simply they want they want to live because simply they think that they, that, that they, they, own, they already have families back home because they have the vested interest to see back their family ladies and gentlemen back home and therefore they will make whatever means necessary to live ladies and gentlemen second idea ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen the example is simple we see that uh, Soviet army have the NKPD ladies and gentlemen the United States has the standard procedure, ladies and gentlemen, of how you can eliminate these people within the army, within the army, ladies and gentlemen. Because the army needs the cohesiveness, and therefore it is justifiable to them to kill this Jesus Christ and to be still killing the civilians by the other means, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, so this is, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> results on how then the capability of them taking decisions to kill these people is actually based on the externalities, never based on the consent of these people killing on themselves. And therefore, any consent that is automatic guilt, ladies and gentlemen, is destroyed. Because these people never had that man's way, the guilty minds, ladies and gentlemen, the consent to kill these people to begin with, because they're actually ha having this kind of uh, uh, externalities because that makes them to do so, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, how actually it is influences every single people in that place in that place to kill the civilians, not because they want to, but because they have to. And therefore, because they have no man's layer, this is, ladies and gentlemen, a legal basis for them to say a defense. And how this is a legal defense is okay. So at the very end, ladies and gentlemen, we have proven to you how this people has no man's layer on how this people is acting based on externality and not because of their consent to do so, and therefore, ladies and gentlemen, these people are innocent. And, it, and, and this innocence, ladies and gentlemen, is what we are going to prove as all like aggressive, but uh, all like aggressive yeah, yeah. to make this defense viable. It's a valid, viable defense, ladies and gentlemen. So all in all, what I have brought to you, ladies and gentlemen, first, we believe that these people are subject to law, and they're actually subject to then fair trial, ladies and gentlemen, or whatever, whatsoever means necessary, ladies and gentlemen, and they can have all the rights all the measure to see that they are actually defending not on the status quo where they are automatically guilty because they are killing someone. Second, how these people are not having the externalities and therefore they are ha having the reason for following order as justified and we stand for these people of the oppressed and we stand for justice.